Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to boot camp for this week. My name is Emily and I'm a graphic designer in Southern California. And we're going to be hanging out all this week. So from Monday to or not Monday, sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9am to 10am, we'll be here streaming together, um, working on a campaign. So in preparation for this week, we were thinking like, hey, what is it that I want to be working on? Should I work on a product? Should I work on, you know, whatever? And then I thought, you know, I have an idea that I've been wanting to do for a while and just never had the time. So this is going to be the week. So um, if you're in the Southern California area or if you're like an avid hiker, there is this mountain called Mount Rubido, which is like a local legend slash hiking spot, dog spot, all of the above. Um, that's just everyone loves, but I feel like doesn't get the recognition like it deserves. And so this week we are going to be making a national park campaign for Mount Rubido to just really give it the love that it deserves. So um, today we're going to be starting the campaign. And what that looks like is we're going to be looking at like, this is like the first email you get from the client, right? It's like, hey, I have an idea. And you say, great, where do we go from here? So we're going to be working together to pull inspiration, to look at colors, typography, layout, design and like get get the wheels turning and get something happening here. And then the rest of the week, we're gonna be building out like the email campaign, the direct mailer marketing, um, social media and everything. So my goal here, which is a good goal, I promise, is to kind of trick everyone into thinking, I didn't know I lived that close to a national park. Like we want this to be so good that everyone believes it. So that's our goal for this week. Um, and I'm excited to get started. So if you are here, it's just me this whole hour. So if you wanna be jumping in the chat and talking with me, so it's not just me talking the whole time, I would love that. Um, you join somewhere over here in one of the things, but I would love to chat with you guys. Um, if you have ideas, comments, questions, I'll do my best to be monitoring both so we can just get through this together. Um, so let's look at in some inspiration. If you are familiar with national parks or if you're not, um, these are like an official thing, I think, of uh, what people have designed and they are for, yeah, a lot of national um, places and things I've visited, some of them, some of them I haven't want to go to, but they're just like a iconic style, I don't, I don't know when they started. I want to say in the 1950s. I did look this up in preparation, but I forget now. But um, they're really iconic and just like a really fun way to, you know, send a postcard, know where you've been, keep memories, stuff like that. Um, and then more recently, uh, there was Type Hike did this really cool collaboration as well that were like a more modern take on, or not more modern, a different take, I guess, on national park posters. Um, and so we'll be pulling some inspiration from this as well and just kind of getting it going from there. So that's a little bit of the background of it. Um, I might like pull some of these in as we're uh, working just to like reference it as we go, but that's kind of where we're going to start. And so then I would say for this, I'm going to start with some reference photos. And this is how I'm going to work through this project. I don't know if this is necessarily like the right way or the best way, but this is how I would approach this project. Um, so I would do like start with illustrations since we're going to be pulling from there for the poster in general. So this is Mount Rubido on Adobe stock. They have a lot of great images, which I was really excited and surprised by the amount that they had for this since it is like much more local and not, not a national park. It will be, but not yet. Uh, so I was really excited for like the opportunity that was up here, which is great. Uh, really good selection, different angles, which is awesome. Um, got some cactus, which I think is a good color inspiration in the summer. It looks more like this, very green. Um, or sorry, not summer, in like the winter and early spring. Uh, the rest of the year, it's pretty brown. So I think that's kind of going to inform our color palette as well. Um, there's some really iconic places to it, which I think is important when you're looking at like developing a campaign and like what's important. Um, this bridge is really important. It is like from Spanish architecture. I looked it up yesterday as well, but it has something to do uh, with a very famous bridge in Spain. So I'm not sure exactly why we have it, but that's iconic for it. Um, the cross at the top is very iconic, if you can see it in this image. Let's see if I make it a bit bigger. That's really iconic, so I think that's going to be something that we focus on as well. It's kind of like the half dome uh, of, not Zion, of Yosemite. It's like half dome of Yosemite, I think, is like the, the cross to Mount Rubido. Um, so I think that's something we want to get in there as well. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll start with those and start pulling from them and seeing how that works. So I'm going to go with this one. I like this one, so I'll go ahead and license it and download it and download a preview in the meantime, just in case. And then what was that other one I was kind of liking? And if you guys see anything in chat as well. Oh yes, Andy says we love cactus. We do love cactus. I actually have a small cactus tattoo. I'm sorry, mom. I think my mom is watching the stream. I hate to talk about it, but um, okay. So we like that one. Let's get the cross as well, just for the heck of it. I feel like that might be a good one. Let's go license it, amazing. We love how easy it is to use that. Okay, and I like this one as well. Okay, so we'll start there. Actually, this one's kind of nice too. Oh, no, nope, we just want this one, please. 
Okay, we'll get that one as well. All right, how's everyone doing in chat? Oh yeah, we got people naming all of the national parks. Love it, love it, amazing. Okay, so now that those have downloaded, we're gonna go and pull that into Photoshop. Um, let me hold on. I got two screen, uh, screens going on here. Let's start with this one. I feel like this one is pretty good. So I'm just gonna drag this directly into Photoshop. I'm gonna move myself on Zoom so we can see, okay. And so far I feel like the colors of this are like pretty bright, which is good. If there was like more contrast needed, I feel like we could start there, but I think this will be fine. Um, so I'm gonna go and turn this into a gradient map. This is probably gonna be like the way that I'm gonna do it again. This might not be the correct way of doing it, but this is definitely like the process that I would take. And so what I'm trying to do here is turn this. So I'm going to eventually, sorry, let me walk you through my process here a little bit more. Um, I'm going to take this in Photoshop and because there'd be two ways I would go about this. Sometimes I would illustrate this using my iPad, um, but sometimes if like drawing is not your strength or you don't like doing it that way, this is, I think, a, a good other way of going about this. Um, so we're going to like pull the contrast really bright uh, and really tight to make sure that it uh, can be transferred into Illustrator a lot easier. Um, and then we're going to use some tracing ways in order to like pull that information out and make it into a vector. Um, you could print from Photoshop if you want to and colorize it here. For me, my preference is to like be doing all of that in Illustrator. Um, so that's kind of the approach we're going to take here. So um, black and white in my experience has been like the easiest to use in Photoshop or in Illustrator. So that's kind of where I'm going here. So what I'm trying to get is the details that I really want to like focused on so like what i'm really looking at is like these rocks right if like this cross is super iconic and that's kind of like i'm imagining being like the focal point of this um i'm gonna try and like make sure that's really really sharp so we can see that and uh focus on that so as you can see these like sliders are really close together if you like change this to a different color um you would still have contrast but it's like obviously less contrast but if this is a way you want to like color a photo um you could do it that way too but so i'm gonna get it here i feel like that's like pretty sharp um and then again, I think I'm going to be focusing kind of on like this area right here where the cross is. I don't know if you can see my cursor. I'm not sure. But um, where the cross is, I think it's kind of where we're going to be focusing on. So I might go ahead also while we're at it um, and like mask out some stuff I don't want as much that might be like too much information for the poster or like too busy. So I'm going to use this button right down here. It's like the little rectangle with the circle in it. This is the masking button. Um, I'm also going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to rename this one and say like original so we don't touch that one this is a uh, semi non-destructive destructive workflow i feel like um so we're gonna take this one and we're gonna mask it and so the reason we're duplicating this is like in case i mask this and i hate how it looks or like oh i forgot something um we always have the original there and so we have something to work off of um so on this one i'm gonna go ahead and like erase out this little person down here i feel like she doesn't need to be in here so i'm gonna use um if you look at the colors right here black is to mask out and white is to show so I'm going to mask her out right here. And when I pull this into Illustrator, this is just going to be, it's transparent on here, but an Illustrator is probably going to show as just white um, since there's no data there. And the same for these people. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see um, like this person. They're great, but I feel like the National Parks poster, as we saw, they didn't. Um, <laughs> Semi non-destructive is my new bio. Yes. I feel like that's a way of life uh, as design and in real life. This guy and his dog, you're great, but we're just going to take that out for now. <laughs> Um, and then so I kind of masked out a little bit of this path that I would actually want. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to white um, and I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm using the bracket tools. Um, they're not the parentheses, they're like the really square rectangle looking ones. That's the bracket tool and that makes it bigger if you do the right bracket and then smaller if you do the left bracket. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I get a little more detail and I'm going to zoom a little bit more. It's getting a little grainy in here, but I think it'll be cool. So like that. All right. Look at those little doggy legs. We're going to... I don't know. I erased a little bit of that. Okay. So let's zoom back out. If you're getting motion sick, I apologize. Um, and then same with these people. They're great. And I'm sure they're having a wonderful hike and they're all going to love this campaign and poster when we're done with it. But for now, oh, this little person sitting here, um, they, they got to go. I'm so sorry. So we're just going to do this a little bit um, as a start. Does anyone, um, is anyone like a local or anyone know of Mount Rubidoux? I was making a joke earlier uh, with the producer and I was like, it's not typography, it's topography, which I felt like deserved to be on the stream, but if anyone likes topography, okay. Um, let's see, that's looking pretty clean. Again, we're focusing on this area and I feel like we cleaned it up and then the foreground, this area right here, I got like a little like box, a little marquee for you. I'm worried about how this is gonna turn out. Um, it might like overload the system. So maybe 
let's take that out for now. So I'm going to command D to deselect that. And let's just do a really crazy mask. I'm going to make my brush bigger. And we're just going to mask that out for now because I think that might get a little crazy. And our goal here is not to crash Illustrator. Oh, actually, let's keep this part in there. All right. Loving this. OK. Oh, actually, there's some more people. Hey, friends. All right, that's looking good. I also don't know what this is. I think this is a plaque, but I feel like this will be, I'm gonna use the patch tool here. So I'm gonna go back to the original photo. I'm a big fan of patch tool. I don't know if I use it to like an absurd amount. I probably do, um, but I use it for almost everything if there's like something. So what you can do with the patch tool is you can grab something like this with a circle, like a little lasso. And then as you see right here, oh, let's see if I can do it. See, there's like a little arrow next to the patch when you drag it that's where it's like gonna sample from right so you can just pull it and sample white or you could sample you know another part of your photo i like that detail so that's gonna get to stay there um but that'll be that for now okay so this is looking contrasty i think that's gonna be helpful um so let's export and actually you know what, on this one too i'm gonna get rid of this guy so goodbye okay love that so i'm gonna export this as a uh it doesn't actually matter i'm just gonna do a quick export png because that's easy and we'll name this sky and the type more typos the better i feel like that's how my workflow goes okay so i already opened up an illustrator fi uh, file just to get this started this right now is 18 by 24 which is like a pretty standard poster size um it's a friendly poster size we're not doing like 24 by 36 which would be really really big this is like a manageable you can mail this if you wanted to maybe poster size <laughs> Um, so we're going to just pull this in. I think the correct way to be to place this, but I do a lot of dragging and dropping. Um, and that's just an honest workflow moment here. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. Again, we're going to vectorize this right now, which I'm nervous to see. We'll see if this crashes it. I hope it won't. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to click on the image. So it's highlighted with that blue. And then we're going to do image trace. I like to do sketched art because sketched art usually pulls out a lot of the uh, white. So you don't have to go back through and like delete and deselect that. Or you can go in other ways and like pull out color. But I'm going to go ahead and click sketched art. And so it's going to run out of that. Wow, look at that. That was really fast. OK, so Illustrator is amazing, as we knew. Um, but that went a lot faster than I thought. So we're going to take this now and expand that more typos the better yes chat understands i feel like you're not a designer if you're not making typos because well maybe you're just really good maybe you're a better designer but i just feel like when you're so focused on you know the art of everything and the color you you can't even read anymore so i am yeah um yes andrew's quoting uh taylor swift we love taylor i'm gonna go see her in august i'm very excited okay so here this is bigger so sorry i skipped a step i'm gonna go back because i was talking about taylor swift so right here see right now it's like uh very black and white and there's this like big x through it this is like a non-editable file right this is like an image like a photo still but like i can't do anything with it yes we should save at one point she's very right okay um i'm gonna click expand really fast and what expanding is doing here is now i'm gonna zoom in this is making this all individualized uh pixels and points which is where like you can get nervous of like illustrator might crash because this is like a lot of information so you do need to be careful about like how much you're doing and if just be prepared like and so you should save so let's go ahead and save um i'm gonna save on my computer just because i feel a little bit um better about that right now because i don't know how my if my uh cloud is thinking right now so we're gonna save this as poster day one we're just gonna save on the desktop because i've not made a folder yet um and then general so now look we got our poster we named it that's amazing okay so this is looking good i'm gonna go ahead and pull this um up a little bit more to like crop this in because if we're going back to like our national park uh, inspiration here, you can see it's like, okay, what's like the hero image? Like what's the the grand moment? And I think for Mount Rubido, it's kind of that like upward illustration. So we'll see for now, but I'm liking this. And then I'm going to get rid of this extra information because it's kind of like going <laughs> to drag the resolution down. Um, Andrew's laughing about hydration now. He was making fun of me on my stream. I have my giant Stanley here. And uh, he was joking. It's like, it's bigger than your head. This is giving 18 by 24. Any bigger would be absolutely absurd. Okay, so we're going to cut this down a little bit. So I'm just going to use the eraser, which is probably also crazy. But I think everyone kind of just has like their way of doing things. So I'm just going to cut it here. 
Um, and if you're like, how did she draw a straight line? It's because my hand is so steady. Um, the way you do it actually is you're going to hold it uh, about where you want to do it. And then I hold shift prior to and then drag. And so when you hold shift and that happens with pen tool with anything, right? It go ahead and makes a straight line. Um, and that is always helpful in this process. So you don't have to cut this down, um, but this is definitely a way to make sure that you're like using less pixels and therefore like less memory and it just runs a little bit smoother. And for my brain, I feel like it feels a little bit cleaner. Um, so I like the way this trace for the most part. I mean, it does get a little bit like pointy and odd in here. And so you could go back through and um, edit those individually if you wanted to, or there's another way that we can go about that. So I also don't like about how like wobbly this crosses, right? If this is gonna be like our grand moment, she really, she's not having her moment yet. She looks a little bit forgotten. So I'm gonna delete that. And then we're gonna go ahead and try this again in Photoshop in a different way. So maybe we need a photo that's actually a little bit closer to the cross. This one might be a little too, oh, let me draw this above. Um, I feel like this angle won't work because of the angle that we already, oh, whoa, we're learning more. Look how, look how helpful Adobe is. Okay. Um, I don't think this angle is going to work because of like here, we'll just like shrink it down just to like get an idea. And I think that might like look a little too crazy. We could like perspective warp it, but mm, that makes me a little nervous. So we're going to delete that. Um, and let's go see maybe if we can find another version of the cross. Um, and then I also do like this. So, uh, no, that angle is not great. Let's go back. Let's go see what, um, what other stock we have, if we have a better one of the cross. Okay. This one's definitely closer. Please show me this one. I feel like that might be better too. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring this one in and we're going to do the same process. And here's a little cheat. So if we go back into Photoshop, I already have this layer, uh, layerized, I guess. So I'm going to pull that one back in. Oh, here it comes. Okay. So since this one's a little bit closer, it might work better and watch this. We're just going to drag it under. Oh, and that gradient was too intense. Okay. So that can happen depending on like the exposure and like the saturation of your image, the gradient maps will definitely change. Um, so we're going to go ahead and double click here and this is going to change like our gradient map again. So this one is a little bit less like saturated. I feel like it's a little more like exposed and bright. So I'm going to change these sliders uh, and we're focusing on the cross. So like, don't look at any other information right now. We're just gonna look at the cross and see if we can get it. Um, but I might actually inverse it, which is going to get scary looking. So the cross, because right in Illustrator, the ones that we're focusing on more or that the program picks up better is the black pixels versus the white. So we're going to try and get this in a place where it like really pops. And if this doesn't work, we're going to have to figure out something else. Um, okay, something cool is happening there. I feel like that might be enough actually that we can get this to work. So we're going to ignore everything else happening in this photo um, and just see if we can get the cross to like pull in correctly. How's everyone doing in chat? Are we enjoying this workflow right now? Hold on, I can't see my, let's say this as mountain. Or we're gonna say this actually, let's say this as cross because that's what we're looking for. Hmm. Don't know why that was having a moment. Let me try again. There we go. Okay, great. Cross. Awesome. So let's go ahead and pull that in as well. And we're gonna image trace this guy. And then I'm going to show you one little like refining tool in image trace here. So we're going to do the same that we did before because I prefer the sketched art version. David says, keep your eye on the cross. Yes. For this design purpose. Yes. Okay. So we're going to click this right here. That looks like a little um, like recipe card. I think is kind of what we call it as. And if you pull it open here, usually it can be collapsed. Like you won't be seeing all of these. I think I don't even know how to hide the hide them to show you what your panel might look like. So we're just going to leave it out like that. So you can adjust these sliders. So if you do like, and this does take a while, depending on how many pixels you have here. So I'm going to pull the threshold up uh, to see, and you see how it got more information in here. So I'm going to adjust these sliders to try to like get where this is like usable and helpful if it works. And again, this is why last time I masked out a lot of stuff because otherwise it can get a little bit slow like this. Um, I'm going to pull up paths. I'm okay with having more corners and I want less noise because that's not really the vibe we're going for and that didn't really do anything. But let's pull up the threshold a hair more and see if that helps. Um, okay. We're going to do it around here. I'm going to click expand. And again, I'm only going for the cross right here. So I'm going to use the direct select tool by pressing A and get the white arrow key. And then we're going to highlight over this, like drag and highlight. And I'm going to click command C. 
and then I'm gonna click off of it by double clicking on the gray and command V. And look, we just pulled out those pixels. So the rest of this ooh, is not grouped and that's scary. Okay, hold on, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go back really fast because if this is all ungrouped, that's gonna be really scary. Okay, so we're gonna move this over here and not on my artboard. All right, and we're gonna press expand again, and then we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, A to direct select, command C, and then we're gonna come over here, command V, and I'm, there's some like extra little guys who got in there, so we're gonna take those out, and then we're gonna group these guys. So I'm gonna highlight all of them, again, with the arrow tool and command G to group, and then we're gonna drag this back in here. And this allows us also, I like that it's separate, so we can kind of like move this where we want it to go. So it's still looking a little bit crazy on this corner here. And this is probably like proportionally not correct now. But the thing that I'm thinking is as we pour, pull more colors in, uh, we can use that as like a texture. And I think that will be OK. Um, and then we're going to zoom back out. And then we're going to delete this so it doesn't like slow down our file because that would be crazy. OK, so this is only like one color right now. So let's get some colors happening in here. Um, so that we can continue to build this out. So again, referencing our National Park posters, I say these are like, I don't know, a pretty limited color range. I mean, some of these definitely have more, but I'm going to say that we're going to use like four to five colors on this. So we're going to go over here to Adobe color and pull a color palette in. So I, we can look at the trends. So they have like a lot of really cool ones here that are going to show you like what are current trends looking like, and then give you a reference photo, which I feel like is helpful. Like this may be um, more fashion oriented. It looks like, but in my opinion, this is like kind of the colors we were seeing in the photos. So maybe that works. Um, Let's just see if anything else here strikes our fancy. And if anyone has some uh, suggestions here, we are very open to it. Oh, Mario, that's so fun. Okay, I'm gonna go up here and search or do trends and I'm gonna put in like mountain and see what comes up. Okay, we got very like cold mountain. This is definitely warmer kind of where we're at. Kind of like this one. I mean, this might be a little bit basic, but I feel like that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this as an ASE. And then I think I can just drag it into Illustrator. Let's see. You cannot do that. Um, I think you go into swatches then. Let's go into swatches. And then I'm going to do um, other library. And then I'm going to go back into my downloads. And it's right here. So I'm going to click open. And then that is going to pull its own little um, swatch panel in. So I'm going to do that again so you guys can see what we did here. And then also give us some more options in case we don't like that one. So maybe let's get something that has like more oranges in it. I don't think this has mountain anymore. Let's do like outdoors, summer. Let's see what we get. Ooh, much brighter. Okay, these are fun. Ooh, I like this one. So it gives you different like different options of how you want to download these. So you could do a JPEG, maybe if you want to send to a client, there's like a bunch of different options. You could just add it to your library. Sometimes my library has issues, so I like to do it as the ASC file. Um, I don't know what that stands for exactly. Maybe someone in the chat knows what ASC stands for, but super helpful. And then, okay, so to do that, we're gonna click on this little library tool, which makes sense for library. We're gonna do add other library or click other library. And then we're gonna go back to downloads, which is where mine are saving to. Whoa, uh, downloads. And then I think it'll be this new one. So we're gonna open it. And it did not appear. Don't know why. Maybe you can only do one at a time. Andrew, do you have any idea of why she's not loading for us? I don't know. Okay. Well, we will just go ahead and use that one then. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Let's see. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and open that one again because it seemed to be having a moment. And this is why you should maybe only open one at a time. Just try one idea and see if it works. Okay, great. So we're gonna use that one for now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to be like, hey, this is green, which I don't really feel like that works for this for now. Oh, we're on the outline. Sorry. If you see how that's not working, I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to turn that one off. This mountain's very not green. This is a misrepresentation of that mountain. So let's do it as a brown for now. Again, I'm on the stroke. Oops. Okay. So here, you see my stroke panel, how there's like two different ones here. Let's go ahead and make sure that one's selected. And then we're going to go back to my swatches, which are here. And she went away. Maybe she's in my libraries. She's not in my libraries. Interesting. Okay. Well, we got the green for now. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull it open and then here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a workaround here. I see. Oh, they're right here. That's so crazy. Would you see that? 
they just sat here by themselves. Okay, great. Look at that. So now I have this highlighted. I'm going to choose the highlight color here, and then I'm going to go ahead and click that one. So that's definitely a little more um, the brown I feel like we we're seeing here, but it's a little bit green. So let's try like this brown. This might be okay. It's a little more red. I'm liking that. It's okay. And then let's make this cross this like lighter tan color. So we're starting here with something here. Okay. So another thing that I would do is I'm going to go like back into this photo to get more detail, right? Because we're a little bit flat here. Um, and we go back to my original photo, which I did some really crazy photoshopping on. And we're going to turn this gradient back on. Actually, let's just do a new gradient layer. That might be helpful. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust these gradients to hit like a different level of detail than we were doing the first time. And so this is going to give us different like lines to pull from and shapes to work with versus like uh, the ones that we originally had. So maybe we want to do lighter or darker. Um, it's just going to depend. So let's do that. Or we could even do the inverse like we did with the cross, but let's try here. Um, let's see, let's do mountains. Wow, I think I spelled that correctly almost, lighter. Okay, I'm gonna go back into Illustrator and then I'm gonna pull this back in. All right, and then we're gonna do live chase again. Yes, this is definitely an honest workflow. This is how I problem solve and go through most things. And if you are working with a designer, this is, I feel like how the, the brain space goes, at least mine, maybe it's different, but I feel like it's a lot of talking to yourself. I'm gonna line up the cross and the rocks here but it's a lot of problem solving. And I feel like people think design is a lot more art-based and it is in some ways, um, but honestly, I feel like it's figuring out what works and then working towards that goal because overall design is much more of a, um, like a communication art. And so it's all like, is this working? Are we going the right direction? Is this helpful? And I feel like that's the, the honest workflow. And as it, as it evolves, you continue to figure it out. Okay, so we're getting some different details. See how we're getting some different shapes and different things out of here. Um, I wish I would have, trace this a little differently and like rounded out some of the corners and stuff, but it's okay. We're going to keep going in this direction and see how it works. And I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier just to cut down on this a little bit is I'm going to use my eraser uh, and cut a line here and then cut another line here. Oop, did not hold shift on that one. Holding shift. Look at that. Okay. So I'm going to use the A or A to get the white arrow tool and direct select those to delete those. So if you use V, because these are grouped, uh, V is the black arrow tool. If you use V, it's going to select everything. Um, so just to get the ones we don't want, you're going to use A and select those directly. Goodbye. Okay. And so here is going to be where we're going to get like a little bit more depth out of these. So this isn't lining up exactly because I changed a little bit of the... Um, the size, but let's look here at the top, see how we're like laying these over and like these are almost matching. Um, so I'm gonna try and match up this little corner right here and this might help us make sure that everything is kind of, yeah, so we're gonna zoom in, make sure everyone's mostly lined up. Cool, so that's gonna give us like some more depth right here, right? Uh, the only thing is that because I cut that off, which was, I guess, a semi-destructive workflow, we're getting a little gap here. So let's just go ahead and size both of these up. So I'm going to drag and select both of these and then just hold option shift to scale from the center. And so now, now that that's hanging off the artboard, it's okay. Uh, and then I'm going to double click in here to get inside this group, delete these, love it. And then I'm going to use this color because it's the lighter color. I think this is going to be a highlight color. Um, so I'm going to come back down to swatches. Or sorry, I want my color guide. It's usually what I use. Um, so I'm going to use, click on this layer. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool by pressing I, and then I'm going to click on this brown. So we're going to match now, right? But then I'm going to use the color guide to get some um, layers out. And so the color guide gives you different like triads and tetrads and a lot of like serious color theory that I know some about, which yeah, I went to design school, but honestly, color theory is something I still am learning every day. Um, so I'm going to go in here and choose this brown color, right? And then I want to highlight color of this. So these are going to be like giving depth to the rock. So I'm going to go ahead and click this lighter one. And let's see, let's use V to click off of it. That's like a little chaotic. There's a lot of detail happening in here. So we can come clean this up. But that one's a little bit lighter to see how we're getting some like different highlights. So let's go back to our National Parks poster. Let's see like the Grand Canyon. This is a lot of rocks. So this is like a good reference for us. So see how we're getting like some lighter tones and then some other different colors in here. But like, that's kind of the layering that we're going for here. So this is looking a little bit crazy. Let's go a little bit lighter, maybe. Um, okay, I'm not mad about that. I think that's something. And then what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna do something kind of crazy. So I'm gonna take both of these. I'm gonna command copy these. I'm gonna merge these together. Again, this maybe isn't the, the correct way of doing something, but this is definitely how I'm gonna work through it. I'm gonna use the Pathfinder and I'm gonna merge these two together to make one giant shape. 
And then what I'm gonna do from here is I'm what I'm trying to do is fill this background color with a color. So like behind all these rocks. Um, so the easiest way that I'm gonna work through this is like you could paint this as a shape and like delete all these out, right? Like you could like delete these and like start making this into like a solid shape. Um, but or you can turn your volume up. I don't know if you can see that. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to click on these and then I'm gonna do I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna ungroup it. Well, actually I lied. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do uh, object path offset path and then what offset path does is it kind of like creates a little bit of um like a uh, an outline or a shadow around everything um so i'm gonna make this really small i'm just gonna do like five pixels and my goal here is to join any paths that aren't already touching um then i'm gonna expand this so we can get it all together yay okay there's definitely still some holes happening here but what the goal was and what i felt was gonna be the most tricky was getting this like top path aligned um, and connected since it was like really disjointed up here so now hopefully this is connected i'm going to merge these paths again and then i'm going to also just put a shape over this to like get rid of a lot of this detail and cover like the rest of the poster so i'm going to do this highlight both of these going to merge these together and then i'm going to click this so see how we have some like individual little like holes in here that are still not filled um you could come in here with a direct select tool and delete all these out which there aren't that many but say you're in a situation where there's more i'm just going to right click on this i'm going to ungroup it and then I'm gonna do release compound path. And what compound paths are, are like the holes in images. So like think like letters, like in the O, how there's like the counter in the middle, that's like a, a compound path that you have to like pull out of it, right? And so this is gonna release those. So it's gonna like fill the shape back in. So we're gonna release that, merge that. I'm gonna delete this because I don't know what that is. Maybe we need it, but for now, she's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up to where our rocks are. So we're getting some depths in here. Um Oh, Andrew says he's literally never used the color guide tool. Is it a nice tool? That's pretty much how I use it. So I say, yeah, it's a nice tool. Cause otherwise I feel like you're in like the other way of going about this, right? Is if you have a color and you like double click here, you're kind of just like, I don't know, meandering around unless you have another way of doing it. That's kind of how I would end up doing it. And then I'm like, oh man, is that in the right like hue? Did that get too green? Like questions like that. And so I feel like color guide just gives you really clean. Like here's like three steps lighter, here's darker, here's a complimenting color. So I like color guide for that. Does anyone else use color guide or is, is it just me out here? Okay, um, so now I have my layer here and I'm trying to send this to the back, right? So this is like my depth of color layer. I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna right click it and then I'm coming down to a range, send to back. Oh, and that, so that's a very similar color to the first color we're working with. So let's go back to color guide, open her back up. And this would be a, a darker color cause this is like our bottom color. And guys, my colors are suffering right now. That's the same color. All right, so maybe what we have to do is keep that as like the base color, and then maybe we're just gonna have to like choose new mid tones and high tones. Okay, we're we're getting somewhere here. This is gonna like really chocolatey here. Let's try here. Okay, and this mid tone. All right, that's still too dark. I'm not a fan. Let's choose a lighter mid-tone. We're just gonna go really light on this. To be fair, Mount Rubido is pretty light. Okay, so my background's that color. So here's my mid-tone. That's my highlight. Mid-tone's right here. Okay, mid-tone, let's get there. And then let's just take this highlight lighter. Okay, I'm not mad. So there's definitely a lot that's happening up here and we might wanna simplify these later on. So like, I mean, this one definitely has a lot of colors. So let's see, as we keep building, maybe it's fine, but it feels a little bit wild to me right now, but let's just do that for now. Okay, and for this cross, I like this for like the like texture and color that we're getting here. So I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to just build the shape around it, I guess. Um, let's find the cross photo we were using. Let's use this one. I'm going to pull this in here <clears throat> and I'm just going to do it over here. Actually, I'm going to use the pen tool to create the shape of this cross. So I'm going to click P on the keyboard uh, or you can find the pen tool over here. And I'm just going to come in here and outline this guy. So we get his true shape since he is our, um, key focus on that. I think I missed a little point here. I'm gonna go straight across like that. And I'm working on a very small scale. So this might be a better idea to like scale this up first to trace it. Uh, it might just give you more accurate tracing, but we'll just do this for now. And I'm using space. So I say hi to these people. Hey, who knew they did not know they were going to be on Adobe live stream. No one knew. Okay. Uh, and then I'll pull this out over and then I'm going to go right here. And before I complete the shape, it's going to show me a little like dot and that shows that we're closing our shape off um and then because i just built this like i traced it which is helpful but just to make sure that everything's like lined up i'm gonna use the direct select tool the a uh arrow key so the white arrow key and then i'm gonna highlight the points on the top i'm gonna come to align 
and make sure align is set to this one right here, which is selection. So I'm going to align those. So yeah, I see how that one, I'm going to undo that. So you can see this guy on the left is going to jump up. So now they're all aligned, which we're coming from an angle. And like, if we're doing it like photo accurate, it's probably okay that it's not straight, but sometimes it's just, I like to do it that way. So yeah, again, I'm using this one vertically aligned to top. So now they're all aligned. And then I kind of want to make sure that like these, well, I guess it goes up to a point. That's fine. So let's make sure like these are like more aligned. So I'm going to center those guys and I'm going to do the same for this one. Um, again, we we're drawing off of a photo, so it's like fine, but I don't know. Sometimes the shapes, I feel like go better that way. Okay. So now we have our shape, right? Okay. And we're going to put this behind the cross and this is going to give us like that depth as well. Let's make sure our like sizing is relatively close here. I'm going to use the arrow tools just to like move her around a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's giving us some depth here. And I'm just gonna like line these up a little bit to make sure that they're like looking similar and people are not gonna be confused. Um, and this is definitely because we use the live trace. Again, like if you wanna illustrate this all by hand, you would definitely get a lot more accurate, but this is kind of like a shortcut um, way of doing it. And I think it's kind of interesting too to see like the textures you're gonna get out of it that I don't think you would like normally draw on your own. So that's kind of why I like live trace. It kind of gives you an interesting feel. I'm going to pull this in a little bit to match this up. I'm going to add a path by pressing plus and move this up. And then we're going to use um, option. Yes, it's option. <laughs> I click all these things without even thinking sometimes. So to make sure that I'm telling you guys what I'm doing. So you've used option allows you to pull these curves on its own um, instead of affecting the whole path. So we'll move these guys around. Okay. What are some things to have handy before starting a campaign? Great question. Yeah, I know. I really got like right into this, huh? So let me help you guys more with that. So I would say when you're talking to your clients um, or if you're doing this on your own, um, I would say an important thing to have is like your vision, right? Of like, what's our end goal? So usually I ask people, you know, like what's our like final, um, where's my color for this? I'm gonna click on this. What's our final goal? Like, is this gonna be just like a campaign or is this gonna be like print, web, digital, like, right? So trying to figure out like what your end goals are is very helpful. And then starting with your messaging. So we're definitely gonna talk about that, which after I got stuck on this color, I kind of got off base there. Um, so another thing, yeah, is the messaging. Like what's the, the core thing that we wanna have people walk away with, right? Um, and if that's for a product, maybe it's like product features, maybe it's, um, don't, I just redownloaded Illustrator. So some of the little things come up. Um, so yeah, it's like, what, what do we want to walk away with? Like, what's like the feeling people want? What's the messaging we want them to know? Is it like features? Is it um, brand like ethos? Like, what is the thing that's like most important for the campaign, right? Um, and then what do we want people to do? Do we want them to like share this? Do we want them to go on a hike? And maybe our case, do we want them to buy something? Like what what's the goal that we want for people walking away from a campaign? Um, so yeah, it's kind of like, how are you getting there? What are you doing along the way? And then like, what are people walking away with? And so for us on this campaign, we need to think about today as well. So we got our color, we got our image kind of, and we got our vision of like, we want this to be a believable dupe of a uh, national parks campaign. And what we want people to walk away with is that this is believable. This is something that's going to inspire me to get outside, to be aware of my city and things like that. Um, and then maybe, well, because this isn't like a real thing, but I was gonna say like, support the national park, like go out and, you know, buy the parking pass and go visit it. Um, I say those are the goals and like to have handy. Um, budget and timeline are also very important. So our timeline is this week. Um, budget is pro bono. We're just out here supporting the national parks. Um, but yeah, I'd say those are the, like, the important things from the client. And then also understanding like the workflow of like how that's going to go, um, like who's going to be your point of contact and things like that. Also very key. Um, I don't know. Anyone else have like handy things that they do before a campaign. Uh, other thing, okay, would also be, so we're gonna do this as a poster and then we're also gonna be doing this as social media, which I'm gonna build out more tomorrow in uh, Adobe Express. I think it's tomorrow. Um, it's We're doing a lot this week. So so uh, I would also start looking at too. So like, let's make this for like social media, right? So this would be like a 1080 by uh, 1350 pixels. Oh, 1350. And then um, I don't think that actually went 1080 pixels. Oh, duh, because I did two in one. <laughs> uh, by 1350 pixels. So then even like looking across, uh, so this is also something something interesting. Uh, print is always like, it looks a lot smaller. I feel like in digital is actually a lot bigger than everyone thinks it is. Uh, this artboard's right now in inches. So these are in pixels, but um, I always think it's funny to look at like, this is a like social media post and this is like the 18 by 24 print. Like the resolution's kind of crazy. Um, and you probably should build this in a separate one so the resolution is correct, but this is kind of how I work through it. So this is going to be 1080 pixels again, and this one's going to be 1920. And so like, as you're working to have this in mind of like, okay, 
how does this scale? Does this like, is this like too much detail? Like, is this going to look crazy if I print it smaller, you know, or does this work even for like this taller one right here? Right. Um, yes. Okay. So someone just said the crosses make me think of Christianity. Yeah. So I looked at a little bit of a history of Mount Rubidoux and I think it was gifted by local, um, a local church that was like the top of it. And it was a huge deal of getting it up there. Like people were climbing up there and like, you used to be able to take cars up there, which is really interesting. Uh, you can't really anymore. Um, but you used to be able to do that. Okay. And so then now we're going to like get into font. So I'm going to work on this more while we're not on stream. Actually, let's give it a sky. So it doesn't look so just like crazy out here. Um, we're gonna use our color guide again. I don't know if I'm gonna like this color. Let's see. Yeah, that's too purple. Let's get something a little more blue, a little sky blue. Oh yeah, Andrew said it's a landmark. There you go. Yeah, I, oh, I actually did make some art. So Mount Rubidoux has been around since the eighties. It was originally owned by a landowner in the area. And then Frank Miller, if you guys are familiar with um, the Mission Inn, the Mission Inn is like a local, I don't know, another local amazing spot. Um, but Frank Miller originally had Mount Rubidoux in mind for doing residential housing. So they were going to do housing, uh, a hotel at the top and then residential housing, like around the bottom, which there is some, but they were supposed to be like building up the mountain and that never happened. But it, yeah, it just became like a local landmark instead, um, which is very interesting. So that actually is key. So let's do that for our campaign. So we're going to be like established like 1880. Let me make this a little bigger. So I'm gonna, let's make, make ugh, excuse me, let's make some notes here. And then we'll do like Frank Miller, because he was part of it. And the other guy's name was Luis Rubido. The old Rubidoux. Rubido. It's always hard to spell. Okay. Let's have him down here as well. And then we're going to type our name. So this would be, yeah, campaign content. Uh, Mount. I guess you could type it out. I always see it as Mount. So we'll see which one we like. And then Rubido. You ever try and spell in French like that? Okay. Okay. Um, which font would be good for this? Do you guys have any suggestions? I think Andrew had a suggestion, but I don't remember what it was. Okay, let's see what Condor looks like. I have a suggestion here. Does this look like kind of what we're looking for? Ooh, that is kind of nice. So if we're looking also at the National Parks posters, uh, we don't have to like look at this uh, exactly, I guess, but um, kind of what we're seeing here, right? We have like a, I'm going to zoom in on this. Oh, it's not going to work. Okay. So what we're seeing here, this is like kind of a sans serif, serif -y font, I guess. So it's sans serif because it's not having like the little points. So like, let's look at a serif font. So like, this is a sans serif, let's do like times, right? So like, this is a serif -y font where it's having these little like points and everything and like really thin and thick. And this is a sans where it doesn't have that. So the National Park one is kind of weird because it's like kind of both, like it has the thick and thin aspects, but uh, it doesn't have like the little, like... I don't know, points on it. Um, so Condor is actually a great suggestion. I'm loving this. So let's go ahead and activate some of these. Um, I'm going to do, I like to activate a couple of weights of it just because like as you're working like for a hierarchy of information, that's always important to have. Um, but I also like looking through the fonts here. So like, let's go to all fonts. Um, let's look at like, I don't know, something funky. Probably not. Let's look at something like um, Western might be fun. Let's try, let's try Western. Let's just see what they have. Okay, this is getting very, like, very dated. This is giving uh, the original founder edition of Matt Rubido. This is kind of cute. I kind of like this one. This one's, okay, this one's fun, actually. Let's try this one. Colt is giving me a vibe here. Right here, it looks like it's more for, like, um, cars, but I'm kind of into it. Let's see. So I'm just activating these with Adobe type, which is, or Adobe fonts, excuse me. Uh, and so those will just automatically populate in here. So let's go back and make sure. So this was Condor. So let's put Condor in up here. Let's do regular. Ooh, loving that. Okay. So let's like copy this over. Wow. That's looking awesome. And then let's reference. I think they do all caps. So maybe we want to try, yeah, let's try all caps just to see how that works here. So I'm going to do it this way. You can do uh, change case, uppercase, or something that I've been liking more lately is that it's like showing up in the character panel now, which is very nice. So like, let's undo that command Z and then I could just come here when it's highlighted and click here. And that's gonna go give you the all caps option. So this is looking a little bit light. So maybe I want like a lighter version or a heavier version of that. So let's go back to Condor. Oops. It's not a day if we're not making typos here. Okay, Condor. <laughs> and let's go ahead and get a thicker one, black. Black is usually like the heavier wait and then oh so this looks like it's a little bit compacted or compact i guess uh which is probably great so let's use this version 
Okay, let's see how both of those look. So now we should have, yep, look into that. Already populated, loving that. Great option. This kind of reminds me of, um, I wanna say it's like Playbill. Does anyone know the one I'm talking about where it'd be like Hollywood? Like what's like the movie or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's called Hollywood. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's pull this one out as well. Get this going down in here. What was the other one I did? I did Colt. Oh, not cold, Colt. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I don't know if I like these necessarily like mixed together. Maybe let's try this one. This one is really like a condensed typeface and a very like uh, extended typeface. So maybe this is gonna look a little bit crazy. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. But maybe we do like this. Mount. Do people actually type it out like this? Does anyone know? That would probably be a good thing to find us to figure out. Um, then I'm gonna go paragraph and like realign this like this. Amazing. Okay, this is definitely getting somewhere, but like nothing like we're super psyched on yet. Okay, 1880. Okay, and let's like see how we're looking here. So yeah, this is definitely like day one of the campaign vibe where you're like, okay, we have the idea of like, where are we going with this and how are we gonna get there? Um, this is looking like a little too centered for me. So I'm gonna like go ahead and pull this like out more. It'll let me. Okay, let's get a little something more interesting here. This color, these colors are just going a little bit crazy here. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, I love that. And then maybe we're going to do like, well, maybe we'll leave off those details for now. But I could see like, I'm going to just maybe do some placeholder type right here. So maybe, oh. okay, so what happened right there is like, if you use a type tool, which is awesome, it'll try and type in a shape if you click on something. And I, I don't want to do that. So that's what happened with all the shapes. So you could lock these layers or I'm just going to kind of come over here and like make a little um, type box. And let's use condor here. I kind of like it. Let's do regular and let's size this up so we could see it. And then let's move the lines closer together. So we're going to change the the letting of this. Okay. Do you ever use recolor artwork? Yes, I do. That's a great question. Let's try that out. That's pretty fun. Um, whoops. How are my layers doing here? Okay. And let's make this like, I don't know. Oh, let's use that cream color. Actually, I like that from our color. Um, the contrast is not here, you guys. I'm gonna have to dial this contrast for us. A little TV magic for tomorrow. So we're in a better place here. Okay. Um, so recolor artwork is awesome. So like what you could do, I usually highlight it if I want to recolor it, but you can go edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. Um, I usually click, this is a different uh, interface than I was used to using. So I usually use advanced options. And what you could do is come in here and you're like, you know what, this color brown, we want it to actually be like, I don't know, more red. We're going to go Grand Canyon on it. Right. And so you can see in the background had already like updated that. And so this is really helpful if you have like these, these are all grouped together and by the color, but if you're using something that's like not grouped by color and you'd like a bunch of different, like say you're doing like a pattern design or something and there's like a hundred little things you'd have to click on. This is really helpful in order to like change that or like more, more frequently what I use it for is if we're using like a, um, like a color that we're then converting over to like an RGB or to a CMYK or something like that, you can like reassign it. And so like, Hey, you're not ending up with like five different color reds. You're ending up with, you know, just the one color that you're hoping to have. Um, a Julia Child moment. I love that. I don't know what we're talking about, but I love Julia Child. I'm reading her book right now. Um, it's very, very fun with her and her husband. Okay. So I think we're going to add something like this down here. I want something like this at the bottom. Cause I think that would be kind of cool. We're really losing this type. So we're going to have to do something different. So maybe we'll make it darker. Um, so just to recap what we did today, we decided on um, our style and direction, which is really important for a campaign. Um, then we chose colors from Adobe color or color Adobe, which is very helpful tool for like finding all that kind of stuff. And we started with our inspiration from Matt Rubido and we are going to be doing this more of the Photoshop route instead of like illustrating all of it actually looking at this again guys i really like this photo so maybe who knows maybe today i'm gonna do this and we'll come back tomorrow and start using this um and then we used uh type adobe fonts to find fonts that we were liking for this so i'm gonna spend some more time after today and like dial these colors in a little bit more to get these where we want figure out this layer of uh illustration detail that we want and then we're gonna keep building this out so tomorrow i believe is we're gonna either be, I think tomorrow we're building out social media. So we're going to have some more like taglines and things that we're going to be pushing for this of like, either maybe we're making this campaign. Maybe you guys should tell me in the chat what you think. Are we going to make this campaign of like make Mount Rubido National Park or should we just like already assume that's a national park and we're just kind of like surprising everyone that it's there and they just didn't know this whole time. So that's probably how our language is going to be tomorrow. So we're going to be doing Adobe Express with that um, and building out that and looking at scheduling for like when we're ready for our campaign to go live. Um, so we'll be doing that. And then we're going to be moving into print mailers. So how do you do direct mailing? So we're going to be doing like, like 
um, probably like a five by seven card. And I also want to do the parking pass because again, I really want this to like build out to be something that people believe in or believe is actually real. Um, so we're gonna look at that of how to use InDesign to merge with your data set. So that way, if you have like a bunch of like addresses and things like that, you'll be able to just merge those easily uh, instead of having to do them all individually. This is really helpful if you're doing like, um, like a, a meeting or like anything where people need badges and you have a lot of people attending or yeah, direct mailers or things like that where you're able to just merge all these datas together and that way you don't have to individually do them and there'll be no typos because the well as long as the information doesn't have typos um so then that's good to go and then we're going to be doing um an email campaign at the end of this as well that's going to bring all these pieces together and i think that's really going to sell the moment so we're going to be like hey buy the poster here's the parking pass sign up like all that kind of stuff in an email flow um and this is kind of how i work through a lot of things with my clients so it'll be like hey we're launching a product and we need to do it across all these platforms or hey we uh, have this new idea and this is how we're going to like go about it and so this is usually what my day-to-day -day looks like as far as like taking a design from the initial email google doc whatever it is that they send it to you as and then building it out across all the platforms in a way that is helpful for them and gives their team input along the way um, which is awesome so if i was sharing this with the client as well usually i'd export it and send it to them that way but there's this new feature up here for share and i'm not going to do it because sometimes it like drags my program a little bit, but um, this is a really helpful way. I've been using this a lot for like uh, Webflow or like uh, email designs of just sharing it directly out of the program so they can add their comments there and then it populates directly. And that way we're kind of cutting down the amount of files we're sending and things like that. It's been really, really helpful um, to use. So that's been awesome and stuff we're looking forward to. If there's anything else you guys are looking forward to um, doing this week or you want me to answer or show you specifically either from today or going forward, we can do that. Um, but that's kind of the game plan of what we're doing here. Yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and name this artboard as well. So this is, I'm going to click right here uh, on this tool and on this artboard, I'm going to name this as like a uh, print. And then I'm going to name this the sizing of it. So a lot of companies, I feel like where people have their own workflows, this is kind of how I use mine. And I'm going to say like, this is like full color. Uh, so say you were doing like a two color version or something like that. So I, I usually use underscores instead of spaces. So that'd be that. Um, and then we're going to come over here again, use that tool, click here. This is going to be like our social uh, feed is usually, I feel like people call it. And then I did this in uh, pixels, even though this whole artboard's in inches, um, we can change that around, but sometimes this is the workflow that I end up using. So this is going to be 1350 or 1080 by 1350. Andy says, this is epic. I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Mount Rubido is epic. Okay. And this will be social uh, stories and this will be 1080 by 1920. Um, and so what's helpful about this is then when you go to export this, so like say you just do, uh, uh, we'll do export us and we'll do JPEGs, right? And then again, we're just gonna put this on my desktop. We're gonna use artboards, all oh, that's great. Or here, we'll make a folder and we'll do national park Mount Rubido. We're gonna manifest that Mount Rubido as a park here. Okay, or a national park. Okay, create it. We're gonna export those. Um, well, this is kind of a mix because we're doing like print and web. So let's just do RGB for now. So we're just going to proof it, which is great. But when we export this, um, because we named our artboard, it's going to go ahead and populate, which is awesome. So let's go in here and look at that because we already named it. Do you see how we have our little names up here? And so that's helpful when you like send these off to a client. They're not like, wait, what's the size of this or what is this for? It's already named. And so that's a good place to start with that. Um, man, these colors, this is going to be what I'm going to be doing today is working on these colors, get them going. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions from what we went over today as well. If not, I'm just going to finish this out by just like working through this more and focusing on like how I want this to look. I think I'm going to pull some like clouds in here. I think there's some clouds. Um, let's see if we can get these clouds going. But this has been awesome. I'm excited to hang out with you guys for boot camp this week. Again, it's going to be 9 to 10 every day uh tuesday so today's done so you did it day one uh wednesday thursday friday and then there should be a schedule somewhere that says what we're going to be working on but if not i'll be sharing it on my social media uh every morning if you guys want to join the stream tell your boss you're busy just kidding do your job but also join the stream because it'd be really fun to hang out with you guys um and keep building this and let's make mount rubido national park let's see if these clouds will work i kind of like that all right oops hit okay awesome well, we'll start adding it in here where it should probably go. We're going to name this clouds. Reporting for boot camp every day. That's what we want to hear for the national park. Maybe we're all park rangers. I don't know. Maybe we have a vibe for what this week is. Thanks, guys. This has been really fun. I'm glad we got to do this. All right. Sketch art. Okay. Yeah, we're getting some clouds here. I'm liking that. Let's like change the texture of these guys. 
I think it's a little more roundy. Illustrator's a little bit tired of making paths right now. So do we have to? It's probably because I also copied this artboard a bunch of times, so that's probably why. <laughs> All right, we're going to delete some of this stuff. Love it. Yes. Okay. So after this, you guys, after, oops, <laughs> after I make that type do crazy things, um, there is an Adobe type boot camp coming up after, sorry, Adobe Express boot camp coming up right after this. So stay on the stream and that will be up next. Let's see. I'm use this and I'm going to do the colors again. Okay. I got some depth here. I'm liking this. Cool. It's getting somewhere, guys. Awesome. And as we close out here, we'll just like, yeah, zoom out, get the overview and just think tomorrow it's going to be even better. I'm not sure if there's other things that we should be doing to close this out right now, but that's kind of the end of our stream for today. All right, everyone stick around for the next stream for the Adobe Express and we'll see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m.